There are places on Earth that scientists struggle with. There are places that were shaped by human hands, but so much time has passed that we've forgotten how some of these places were built. In some cases, we don't even know why they were built. These locations are among the most mysterious on Earth, and we're going to take a closer look at them now. Angkor Wat is a famous medieval temple complex in Cambodia. But it's not the only medieval marvel in the country. In 2016, archaeologists used laser technology to prove that there's a network of enormous medieval-era cities buried beneath the ground. The largest of them is on the doorstep of Angkor Wat. The capital of modern Cambodia is Phnom Penh, but some of these newly discovered cities, which were built between 900 and 1,400 years ago, rival Phnom Penh in size. If we assume that all of these cities were at their peak during the 12th century, just as Angkor Wat was, it would have been the largest empire in the world at the time. As well as the cities, archaeologists have been able to identify elaborate water systems, of a kind that weren't thought to have existed until 200 years later. Historians have always wondered why Angkor Wat was so singular, and where all the people who must have used it lived and worked. Now it appears we might finally have some answers, but the answers only lead to new questions about the history of Cambodia and its people. The northern end of the Scottish island of Orkney is suffering badly from the effects of erosion. That isn't necessarily a great thing, but it has at least allowed archaeologists to make a few new discoveries there. If it weren't for erosion in and around the Bay of Scale, Experts would never have found marked and incised stones, rectangular bands, cattle jawbones, deer antlers, and boar teeth in the area. They now think that this might once have been the site of a village during the Neolithic era. We already know that people lived here during Neolithic times because of the presence of the village of Scarabray, which is less than a mile from here. But it's always been thought that Scarabray was the only settlement on the island back then. Now it seems likely that the people of Scarabray had neighbors when they lived here around 5,100 years ago. Coincidentally, it was a storm that exposed Scarabray to archaeologists for the first time in 1850. Now we found its sister town in almost the same way. The race is now on to gather as much information as possible from the site before the erosion gets any worse. The tales that are told about Knossos are so rich and elaborate that it's difficult to know where the fiction ends and the facts begin. To many archaeologists, this is the first city ever to be founded in Europe. You'll find what's left of it on the island of Crete, where it's classed as a Bronze Age archaeological site. The truth is that it might be far older than that. There's evidence that humans settled here as long ago as the Neolithic era with evidence of 9,000-year-old relics and remains in the region's caves and rock shelters. The palace that was built in Knossos, some of which still stands, was the epicenter of the once mighty Minoan civilization. It was abandoned for unknown reasons approximately 3,400 years ago. Back when it was built around 4,000 years ago, it sat in the middle of a town of perhaps 18,000 people. Within 300 years, the population had swollen to around 100,000. As for the famous labyrinth with its minotaur, which is said to exist beneath the palace, archaeologists haven't found that yet, but they're still looking. There are hundreds of beautiful Hindu temples in India, but Brihadisvara Temple in Thanjavur, Tamil Nadu is truly special. This Dravidian-styled temple, dedicated to the deity Shiva, is one of the world's largest Hindu temples and is considered the greatest surviving example of fully realized Tamil architecture. History tells us that the temple was built by order of the Chola Emperor Rajaraja I, with construction work beginning in 1003 and ending in 1010. Together with a few temples in the surrounding area, Brihadisvara Temple is part of a UNESCO World Heritage Site called the Great Living Chola Temples. Back when the temple was first built, it was surrounded by a moat and featured stunning frescoes and sculptures related to Shivaism. 
Vaishnavism, and Shaktism. But sadly, the temple was damaged in an incident of some kind several hundred years ago, and some of its artwork was destroyed. The fortified walls that now surround the temple were added during the 16th century. Aside from its historical significance and its outstanding beauty, the temple is also noted for hosting one of the largest Shiva Lingas in India. You've probably heard of Machu Picchu in Peru, but you're less likely to have heard of Choquequirao, despite the similarities between the two sites. The name Choquequirao translates into English as Cradle of Gold, which tells you how its builders felt about the place. Those builders worked for the Inca Emperor Pachacuti Inca Yupanqui, who ruled between 1438 and 1471, and ordered the construction of these buildings and terraces. It went on to be the final home of the Sons of the Sun when they fled Cusco during the 16th century. What we know about Choquequiaro is limited because only about a third of the site has yet been fully excavated by archaeologists, despite work being ongoing since the 1970s. Of the things found so far, the most impressive features are sets of terraces featuring figures of alpacas and llamas made from carved white rock. Unfortunately, the site doesn't receive as many visits from tourists as it arguably should, because it's so difficult to reach. Getting to Choquequirao involves a two-day hike through an area that's known for mudslides during the rainy season, so you'd have to be a brave traveler even to try it. While we're in this part of the world, let's take a look at Kulap Fortress, which is said to be the former home of the so-called Cloud People of Peru. This mysterious site, which has long fascinated archaeologists, is believed to be the oldest of all the stone ruins in the Americas. Kulap is in the Chachapoyas, close to Luya, and was built on a mountaintop hundreds of years ago. The stone wall that runs around the exterior of the fortress is 60 feet high and guards what were once the living quarters of thousands of residents. Some of the stone blocks used in the construction of the fortress are 10 times larger than those used to make the famous Great Pyramid of Giza, and the question of how people were able to move and assemble them at the end of the 4th century when the fortress was built remains unresolved. Archaeological evidence discovered at the site suggests that the 400 buildings contained within the walls remained occupied for around 1,000 years before they became abandoned during the early colonial period. It's likely that the fortress was intended as a defense against the Huari people, although we can't be sure of that. Ta Prom, an ancient temple in Cambodia's Krong Siam Reap, has been abandoned for so long that the war between nature and stone for the sovereignty of the site has come to a standstill. In some places, roots and branches have gotten so far through the stonework that they're the only thing keeping the old walls upright. In 1186, during the pinnacle years of the Khmer Empire, King Jayavarman VII ordered the temple to be established as a Buddhist monastery and the stone face of his mother that he ordered to be put into one of the walls is still plainly visible, even if it has been heavily weathered by the passing centuries. There are other beautiful carvings and statues at the site, but the so-called Ta Prom dinosaur, which appears in one of the corners, is by far the most notable. Although it closely resembles a dinosaur and cannot be mistaken for anything else, dinosaurs were not discovered until 1824. How could a carving of a dinosaur be found in a 900-year-old Cambodian temple when none of the people who built it had ever seen one? The hardest thing to comprehend when you're looking at images of Longmen Grottoes in Luoyang, China, is that every single one of the tiny black holes on the side of the cliff is a cave. And each of those caves is a tiny independent Buddhist temple. If it wasn't for the enormous Buddha sculpture that sits at the heart of the grottoes, you could be forgiven for thinking that the entire site was created by human-sized termites. The work of carving out the grottoes happened over the course of several hundred years, but most historians agree that the bulk of it was carried out between the 6th and 7th centuries, starting during the time of China's Tang Dynasty. Owning a small temple in the side of the rock became something of a status symbol, 
And so wealthy nobles and high-ranking military officers spent their money commissioning their own little niche in the limestone and then furnishing it with statues. It's thought that more than 100,000 religious carvings existed at the site if you added all the contents of all the caves together. Many were stolen and looted in the years since their construction. But these days, the grottos are protected as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so no further lootings are likely. A site as large as Borobudur Temple in Magalang, Indonesia, needs a suitably large legend to cover its creation. And it has one. It's said that a whole army of monks worked together to build the gigantic 8th century temple site by hand. Which, given the fact that it's made of more than 180,000 cubic feet of lava rock, seems unlikely. It's as ornate as it is massive. There are more than 500 Buddha statues and reliefs that mark the path to the top of the Steppe Pyramid site, all of which tell us what life was like during the days of Buddhist Java. Sadly, they don't tell us why it was suddenly abandoned in the 1300s, after which it stood empty and forgotten for 500 years. There's another mystery on top of that, too. The location is surrounded by active volcanoes, and there's regular seismic activity around it as well. Without anyone to look after it for five centuries, it withstood earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. Not only do we not understand how Borobudur was built, but we also don't understand how it survived. The whole ancient temple city of Bagan in Yuangyu, Myanmar, should be classed as an ancient archaeological wonder. There are more than 2,000 temples here, some more spectacular than others, dotted among the trees and creating a landscape like nowhere else on Earth. The spires on the temples would once have gleamed in the sunlight, but they're still stunning even in their semi-ruined state. Bagan was the capital of the kingdom of Pagan during the 12th century, and some sources say that the city contained as many as 10,000 Buddhist pagodas, stupas, and temples back then. Natural disasters are to blame for the loss of many of them, although repeated invasions by hordes of Mongols didn't help much either. It was the Mongols who eventually ensured that the city no longer had a population. Today, Bagan is abandoned and overgrown, with the foliage only serving to enhance the otherworldly feel of the place. The whole 26 square miles are now protected as a historical site, but conservation and restoration projects are permitted. In fact, those efforts are the only way that most of these temples will see the 22nd century. The creation of the Ellora Caves in Verul, India didn't happen overnight. Based on the archaeological evidence, it seems that work began there during the 6th century and continued for four centuries resulting in wonders like the Kailasha Temple, which is the single biggest monolithic rock excavation on the planet. The enormous network of rock-cut monasteries and temples exists both above the ground and below it, and appears to have been worked upon by Buddhists, Hindus, and followers of the Jan religion, working side by side in harmony. There are more than 30 different temples within the square mile that the site covers, all of which have unique features and decorations. If anyone attempted a construction project on this scale today, the cost would run to several hundred billion dollars. And so it's unlikely that anybody would even try it. Back when they were new, they were even more beautiful than they are now, with every inch of the rock covered in painted lime plaster. Traces of it still survive today, but offer few clues as to who originally suggested building the cave temple system here or what inspired them to do so. Given all the Mayan, Inca, Olmec, and Mesoamerican people who once lived in South America, there are several contenders for the title of oldest city of the Americas, but there can only be one winner. The winner is Caral in the Supa Valley of Peru, which you may sometimes hear referred to as Caral Chupasigaro. Archaeologists believe that the first people came to settle in the city approximately four and a half thousand years ago, and it eventually grew to home a population of around 3,000. For the time, that was enormous, 
The temples, plazas, streets, and houses that were built here were created during the same years the ancient Egyptians were building their pyramids. At the center of the site is a tall temple, 92 feet high and 500 feet deep. At every other site like this in South America, weapons have been found buried in and around temples and plazas, but there are none at Kerala. The Andean people who lived here must have been peaceful souls. Sadly, that probably left them wide open to attack. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!